Yo, what's up, viewers? It's your boy, Blaze Hollow, coming at you again with a new what if. This time, I'll be bringing you a story that I didn't expect to actually do right away, but I saw all of you in that community post really go crazy for it, so here it is. What if Deku had Maharaga's powers? But before we get into it, there's something I want to bring up. I'm kind of going through a little bit of a moving process. I'm finally moving out on my own. If I do not post during February through March, that's why. I'm actually still debating with myself if I might take all of March off from YouTube, just haven't decided yet. But with all that said, let's get into it and start that intro. No, I honestly don't think you can become a hero. the last day of school before summer break as the teacher was giving his final lecture to everybody about future careers as he was about to explain about the many different careers but instead of doing that he tossed the papers into the air knowing that his entire class wanted to go into the hero course that's when an ashy haired blonde jumped up onto his desk letting small explosions go off in his hands hey teach don't throw me in with these losers they'd be lucky to work for some d-lister out in the booth if they're lucky. I'll be the first student from this school to get into UA and then I'll become the number one hero. The entire class went into an uproar wanting to argue with the Ashley Blonde while the teacher was going through test scores he noticed something. You did do excellent in the exam Bakugo but it doesn't seem like you're the only one that has a chance of getting into UA. Izuku seems to also have a chance. The entire class turned to look towards the green haired boy who seemed to be scribbling down in his notebook once he noticed that everybody's eyes were on him he flinched giving them all a good look at his eyes that seemed to have derma chakra wheels for pupils as they were a bright gold but instead of praising him for being one of the students that could get into the best school they just laughed at him bakugo was annoyed at the idea of a quirkless person going to one of the greatest hero schools as he started to set off even bigger explosions in his palm staring down izuku deku you better go nowhere near Yue. You and your freaky eyes have no right to go there. You're worthless. Izuku nearly fell out of his seat as he was frightened as he tried to see if the teacher was going to help him, but noticed that the teacher was on his phone conveniently. Well, actually, Yue has a new policy allowing quirkless people to try out for the hero course. Before this entire situation could get out of hand, the bell started to ring, causing a lot of the students to hurry up out of the class classroom not wanting to get involved with this not even the teacher leaving izuku and bakugo alone with his goons to finish this a blonde then walked up to izuku placing a hand on his shoulder with a very intense smile look since it's the last day of school i'm gonna do you a favor if you stay away from ua i'm not going to mess you up izuku was stuttering trying to think about what to say remembering just how much he really wanted to try to be a hero that's not fair, Kachan. Everyone has the right to go to their dream school just like you, so why does it matter if I try out or not? Bakugo didn't like that answer as he started to have small little sparks come off of his hand, making a part of Izuku's shoulder make smoke in between his fingers. That wasn't a request. You're not going to UA, and if I see you there, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Before he could continue making threats, he looked over at the nerd's desk, noticing a notebook that was open to a page all about him. You're taking notes on me now? Who said that you could do that? Izuku tried to grab for his notebook, only to be aggressively shoved away as he slammed into one of the desks behind him onto the floor. Come on, Kachan. Why does it matter if I try out or not? It doesn't affect you no matter what. Bakugo was extremely annoyed as he picked up the notebook and exploded it right between his hands, leaving it charged. 
charred and smoking, but before anybody could do anything, he chucked it out the window. Let your notebook be the example. If I see you anywhere near Yue's gates, that will be you, but I'll give you some advice. Izuku was starting to get up from the floor as his body was hurting from the slam. And what would that be? Bakugo had a big smirk on his face as he started to walk away, but he looked back the moment that he got to the door frame. Why don't you do yourself a favor and swan dive off the roof and hope for a quirk in your next life, loser? Izuku gathered his things, a little bit depressed but knowing that this was just an average day for him. It took him about 20 minutes to find his notebook, mostly destroyed and wet from landing in the school's koi pond. After he gathered it, he decided to leave school taking a different route than usual, which led him to go under an overpass. He was halfway through as the manhole cover that he passed started to rattle like something was trying to come up from it, startling him. He just stood there, only for a greenish sludge to start coming out of it. Sorry, kid, it's your unlucky day. I didn't know that he was in town, so I'm going to need your body as a shield. Time seemed to move slowly for a second as the sludge-like person covered Izuku, making it hard for him to breathe. Izuku tried to rip the sludge off of him as he was trying to get it out of his mouth as well, but neither of them happened to realize Izuku's special eyes started to shine for a second, almost like they were going to spin. But before any of that could happen, a loud, boastful chuckle could be heard. Have no fear, because I am here. The sludge villain was splattered all across the underpass from one mighty punch, leaving Izuku dazed. As he was coughing up sludge, his eyes started to go back to normal, causing him to shiver as he looked up to see the number one hero standing right in front of him. Struggling to get his words out for a second, he started to stutter. All Might, is that really you? All Might gave off his signature smile with a thumbs up. Yes, sorry about that. The sewer system around here is a little tricky, so he was able to get away from me for a short amount of time. I hope that you're okay, but I really must go. Izuku saw this as a golden opportunity to see if his dream could become reality. Please wait for a second, I really need to ask you a question. All Might kept on walking like he was getting ready to leave. Sorry, but I don't have time. All Might leaped into the air, feeling like he was dragging a little bit, almost like he didn't put enough force to carry his weight. Confused about the situation, he looked down to see Izuku gripping onto his leg for dear life. What are you doing? This is dangerous. Let go of me. Izuku held onto the leg for dear life, realizing how high they were, even though All Might was trying to force him off. I can't do that right now. If I let go, I'm going to die. All Might stopped trying to get the boy off of him, realizing their situation. Oh, right. We should probably land first. The both of them landed on top of one of the nearby buildings. Once they were completely on the ground, All Might was about to leap off again, only to get stopped by Izuku desperately. Please wait, All Might. I just need you to answer this question question. It will determine a lot for my life. I need to hear the answer from you. All Might hearing that knew that he couldn't leave, but he couldn't stay either. His time was about to run out, but since he was thinking too long on it, he finally erupted in a poof of smoke, revealing Small Might. Oh shit, this might be a problem. Izuku stumbled backwards in shock, thinking that this person that he was talking to was an imposter. Wait a minute, you're not All Might. You're some kind of an imposter. All Might coughed up a little bit of blood. No, I am him, kid, but because of a villain a few years back, I ended up like this. He lifted up his shirt, revealing that he had a nasty scar. Everybody likes to say that hero work is all sunshines and rainbows, but in reality, it's very dangerous. Izuku was completely off guard, trying to think of which villain could have done this to All Might. Was it Toxic Chainsaw who did this? to you? All Might was surprised this time, seeing that this kid actually knew his stuff. No, it wasn't him. It's somebody 
else that I don't really like talking about, but since we're both stuck here for a minute, you said you had a question for me? Izuku remembered why he did all this, as he tried to make the most serious face and straighten out his back the best that he could. I was wondering, can somebody without a quirk be a hero? All Might tilted his head, giving off a look of annoyance and disgust. Hell no, they would just be a liability on the battlefield, I'm guessing because you're asking, you're a quirkless yourself. He rubbed the back of his neck, hating that he had to deal with this right now. Trust me when I tell you, do yourself a favor and get a nice desk job, or if you really want to be a part of the action, just join the police force. You cannot be a hero. We would be too busy trying to save you from trying to do something heroic before we could actually do our job. Izuku's confidence that he had a second ago shattered like glass from hearing such a harsh and careless words from his idol. I see, so I'm guessing when you tell everybody that they can be a hero, they have to meet a certain requirement? Oh my got up as he was finally able to go back into his muscular form. Yeah, no offense kid, but it's all PR. To be honest, I never believed in any of that stuff. I believe you need to have a strong ability to be even considered to maybe join us out there on the battlefield. But until then, I hope you're able to at least get a decent job. Maybe you'll be able to get a part of hero marketing. That way you can feel a little bit like us. Izuku watched All Might leap off as he was just standing there silent, looking at the ground as tears were dropping from his face onto the floor. That's it. Even my idol was a fraud. He didn't even believe like a little guy like me be able to do the right thing. It's just like everybody keeps on telling me, not all men are created equal. Izuku was finally able to get back to street level after about 10 minutes. He walked through the alleyways trying to get back to the main street when he came across the sludge villain rampaging again. The heroes, along with a lot of civilians, were just standing around not doing anything. While places were being put on fire, his eyes focusing, noticing something sloshing around in the sludge was his old bully slash former friend. Achan's been captured by that villain. Why isn't anybody doing anything? He looked around and spotted All Might in his small form, realizing that his time must be up. He looked back at Bakugo, who was suffocating, which made him move on instinct, throwing his bag at the sludge villain's face and then trying to rip the sludge off of Bakugo. Don't worry, Kachan. I'm here to save you. All Might, who saw this, realized that the situation was going from bad to worse and forced his body to transform. Damn, kid, if he would have just given us some more time, he wouldn't have to deal with two hostage situation. All Might leaped in and with a Detroit smash, splattered the sludge villain, freeing Bakugo and holding on to Izuku as everybody saw the weather seemed to be changing. All of the flames were being put out by this amazing strength. Newscasters started to get their cameras on All Might, hoping to get a quote from him, but then they saw that he had a serious face, so they kept their distance for a little bit, but made sure that he could be heard on all of their cameras. As Izuku was shaking his head and regaining his focus, he saw that All Might was standing above him. All Might, thank you for saving us. All Might just folded his arms as he stared down at Izuku. I told you before, kid, quirkless people cannot be heroes. You just jumping in right now was a major hazard. You could have gotten yourself killed. You also could have given the villain another hostage. All you did was risk your life for no good reason. Izuku stumbled back a little bit until he fell on his ass. I was just trying to help. I saw that one of my classmates was in danger and nobody was doing anything. All Might shook his head as he pointed up towards one of the nearby skyscrapers, revealing other heroes that could have handled the situation. Some of us aren't capable of dealing with certain villains, so we had to try to buy time. It's called strategy, my boy. Something that you don't seem to think about. You put more people in danger by acting so recklessly, so for the last time, get it through your head. You can't be a hero. The entire crowd that was watching this started to boo and throw garbage at Izuku, even yelling things that weren't even true, like him being a waste of space and causing hazards for the heroes. Izuku grabbed onto the side of his head, wanting to scream, but instead he just grabbed his bag and started running. Wanting to get as far away from this entire situation as we cut
cut away to an underground area with a man watching the news while strapped to a bunch of devices, very intrigued by what he just watched. Potential new recruit along with somebody that helped spread the message of evil along with the hypocrisy of heroes. He started to laugh joyfully. Oh, All Might, you must have just handed me a very powerful pawn and you don't even realize it. A man made completely out of purplish black mist appeared as he was wearing a butler's outfit. Master, would you like for me to try to retrieve this boy? The man was thinking about it for a minute, only for him to get a devilish smile on his face. No, I think I'll handle this one personally, Kodagiri. Just get me his whereabouts later tonight and I'll handle the rest. Kodagiri nodded his head. Would you also like for me to get a room prepared for him, Master? The master started to remove some of the medical wires connected to him. Yes, I believe that after this, he has no role to play in society or for the heroes. His role is to become one of us. We cut back to Izuku when he just got home, seeing his mother standing there waiting for him, as though she was supposed to be there to comfort him. When he walked up to her only to get slapped in the face, not expecting his mother to just do something like that. What? What was that for? Inko felt awful after hitting her son as she just held her hands right in front of her chest. I want you to drop all this stuff. After what I saw on the news today, I got scared that I was going to lose you. It's time that you focus on something that you can do instead of doing something that you can't do. Okay, sweetie, why don't we remove some of that merch from within your room so we can sell it to help you find a new career choice. What do you say? Yuzuku felt the final string of hope for his life finally snapped, not knowing what to do or what to say. He just looked at his mother. Okay, we can do that in the morning. Inko hugged her son tightly. I know it's gonna be hard, but I feel like it's finally time for some reality, and who knows, maybe you'll be happy with some kind of new career choice. You might just find out. Yuzuku just separated from his mother and walked past her. All right, I'm gonna go to my room, maybe start setting up some of the stuff to be sold. Once he got to his room, he stared at all the figures, his posters, his bedding, having the face of the man who ruined everything for him. The one that he used to praise, the one that he used to defend, only for all of his loyalty to be destroyed in an instant. Yuzuku only had one thing left to do for himself as he wrote a note for his mother that he left on the desk, grabbing his school bag and dumping it out only to fill it with all of his hero notebooks and waiting for nightfall. Once his mother was asleep, he went to the top of the apartment complex standing over the edge. I hope that Kachan will be happy with this. I'm taking his advice and taking a quick swan dive off the roof and see where I end up in the next life. As he was getting closer to the edge, he felt like this weight that was placed upon him starting to lift, but before he could commit to the jump, he heard footsteps from behind him, seeing a man in a black suit wearing a black helmet. Who are you? Are you trying to stop me? The man was looking at the situation, thinking which would be better for the boy to be alive or to transform it into one of his experiments, but before he could have his choice, he wanted to hear the boy out. Technically, I'm the man trying to help you get a second chance at life. Izuku chuckled softly, feeling like he just heard the greatest joke of his life. Really? And how are you going to help me? The man put a hand on his chin, trying to figure out what to say. Well, for starters, my name is All For One. I'm the leader of a villain group trying to change society. And I think with what happened to you today, you'd be welcome with open arms to our group. Plus, you could reveal the truth about All Might to all the sheep that follow him. Izuku looked at his backpack that he was keeping on his back and then dropped it behind him as he walked onto the edge of the building. I don't really think there's much that I can do, but maybe my notebooks can help you out. I have analyzed heroes my whole life, plus I put in the weakness that I found out from All Might recently, put it to good use, and maybe use my suicide as a reason for revolution. All for one watch as the boy jumped back, closing his eyes. He then 
proceeded to walk forward and not caring about the boy living or dying, he picked up the notebook and saw that there were a lot of things written down about proper analyzation and almost feeling like he wasted such good potential. You have no idea how much you've helped even though I do not know you fully. I thank you, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku was staring up at the sky, feeling gravity take a hold of him as he was closing his eyes. He just prayed for himself. I am hoping in my next life I could be happy and just live life free. But at that moment, when he said those words to himself, a great power was bestowed upon him, and once he hit the ground, hearing his bones break and blood splatter everywhere, his eyes opened. As the golden derma chakra wheels in his eyes started to spin, all for one leaped off the edge of the building himself, but unlike Izuku, he was able to brace himself fully, going down slowly, but once he landed beside the boy, he noticed something. The eyes, but more importantly, the pupils were spinning as the body was fixing itself, almost like it was being put back together slowly but effectively. Intriguing, does the boy have a regeneration quirk and just not know it? I might need to hand him over to Uchiko for further study. He proceeded to pull out his phone and call Kodagiri. It's me, I need you to have the doctor have a medical room ready. The boy seems to be more valuable than I thought in more ways than one, along with sending a portal to my location as quickly as possible. Kodogiri quickly opened a portal to his master. As he walked out, he looked down and saw the boy as he raised an eyebrow. So you were unsuccessful in recruiting him, master. I'm sorry for your failure. All for one kept his eyes on the boy, using his other quirks to analyze over the broken bones and torn muscle as he was seeing them repairing themselves, but stronger. The boy is not dying. I want to bring him back to the lab and have him tested. If he makes a full recovery, I'll have to try harder to convince him. If not, then I'll have to kill him and take his quirk. Kodagiri nodded as he picked up Izuku carefully. And what about the boy's mother? What if there's a chance she goes looking for him? All for one walk towards the portal like he just didn't care. I'll be sending one of our demolition groups to this apartment complex soon, so she won't be a factor. Two days have passed since Izuku tried to commit suicide, but he was opening his eyes in a strange room that was completely white. Along with him laying on a comfortable bed, this entire place smelled like cleaning product and bleach, assuming that it was a hospital. Where am I? Oh, I see that you're awake, young lad. A chubby old looking doctor came over to Izuku's bedside with a big smile on his face with goggles on his forehead. I have to say you have one of the most impressive abilities I've ever seen. Izuku was confused, not knowing who this man was or what he was talking about. Who are you and what ability and how did I get here? Last time I checked I... That's when he remembered that he jumped off the building. He sighed, realizing that he wasn't in pain but he felt wonder, wondering why he wasn't broken or dead. How long have I been out and what happened to me? The doctor sat there in amusement, watching one of his newest subjects not even understand his own ability. Well, if you keep on rapid fire questioning me like that, I might not be able to answer them all. He handed Izuku a cup of water and watched him drink it. I'll start with my name. I'm Dr. Ujiko and you've been out for about two days after you tried to commit suicide. But your benefactor has done everything he can to help you recover. Izuku was confused by that, not knowing of any benefactor that he could have. Benefactor? Are you talking about my mother? Ujiko shook his head, trying to act like he was sad for a minute. Oh, my fair boy, I'm sorry to tell you this, but your mother has actually been killed a day ago. The apartment complex that we tried to get a hold of was destroyed by some villains. I'm so sorry for your loss. But a man that we both know decided to take as much of his wealth and resources to help you recover. Izuku didn't know what to say or to even think about what he just heard about his mother as he just stared at his hands confused. You said I had an ability. What is it? Ujiko realized that the boy wanted all the information that he could get so he could process it all at once. Well, I don't know much about it yet.
yet. We still need to do a few more tests, but from what we've been able to see, it might be some form of regeneration. Before the conversation could go any further, the door opened, revealing a man in a black suit with white hair and red eyes that dripped confidence, along with a concerned look on his face as he looked at Izuku. Hello again, young man. Do you remember me? I'm the man that you talked to on the roof before you jumped. Izuku was trying to focus when a name came to his mind. You're all for one, right? All for one was happy that the boy was able to remember him and didn't have any brain damage. Yes, and I have a proposition for you that I hope you'll hear out. But that's where I'm gonna leave it off this time, guys. I hope you enjoyed part one. This entire series is gonna be crazy and I'm going to enjoy showing you into my madness wheelhouse. Make sure to leave a like and comment down below. With all that said, I'm out. Peace.